Hi everyone, my name is Sergio Fernandez Balaguer. I work for EMT Madrid, the public transport operator of the city. And in the next slides, I will show you our example on electrification of buses and integration in cities. This is the index of the presentation. We will go through all those points, uh, figures, a strategic plan, the current e-bus service, what to consider when electrifying bus routes, the operation structure, how to purchase or how we do purchase buses, our evolution, adapting e-bus depots, the importance of knowledge exchange and outcomes and conclusions. EMT is quite an old company, it was created in 1947, it's fully owned by Madrid City Council and we operate a whole network of public urban buses in Madrid. Since 2014 we have added different other services to our portfolio. These are some figures of 2021, and here you can see the different services. So not only the bus, we have more than 2,219 bus lines. 84% of our green uh, fleet is considered green, uh, sorry. And then we have uh, all the different services up to seven business lines, such as the bike sharing system, underground parking facilities, the towing service, the cable car, advertising and consultancy. We have five operational centers, bus depots, and we have more than 9,800 employees. So the first point is to focus on the strategic approach. EMT has a new strategic plan that goes from 2021 to 2025 and is totally aligned with Madrid City Council government strategy, which is so-called Madrid 360, is the new environmental strategy on air quality and climate change. Those two strategies uh, established very ambitious uh, targets in terms of decarbonization, because one of the most important objectives is to make EMT a green and sustainable company, and therefore decarbonization plays a key role. What is the main conclusion of this? explanation is basically the importance of alignment of policies, strategies and political support. This is our current e-bus service. We have a total number of 179. We have 15 bus lines fully electrified, but the strategic decision that made this change possible was taken in 2010 when the company decided not to buy any more diesel buses. And in 20 uh, 10, uh, we also took a very important decision, which is to build a first, the first 100% uh, compressed natural gas bus depot in Europe. Our aim is to get rid of uh, diesel buses uh, by 2023, and that also brings the challenge of very ambitious purchase processes uh, to renew the fleet, because we need to reach more than 673 buses by 2027. What to consider when electrifying routes and new buses? Well, for routes, the demand, the kilometers of that bus specific, that specific bus line, the schedule, the distance between the bus depot and the head of that bus line, the charging system, either opportunity or conventional, that means overnight at the bus depot, the orography as well. And for the buses, which is the size of the length or the length of the bus, either from 8 meters or micro bus or up to an articulated one, the range to cover, and also different factors that influence this range, which is the weather, the climatology, the service requirements that may be set by the public transport authority, the air conditioned or heating systems that may reduce the range by even 20%, according to our own experience, and also which are the estimated versus the operative values uh, of this specific bus line or service. Regarding the operational structure, this is how uh, we do it at EMT. So we have uh, the fleet provider providing the bus, the chargers, the initial training and the maintenance during the warranty period. And that is arranged via a supply contract. And then we have the energy provider via a services contract. And what do we do? 
While at EMT, we are the bus operator, we maintain the fleet, we train our own workforce, uh, because the previous training was the, the training for trainer for trainers, and then we install and maintain the charging infrastructure. And regarding the purchasing process, well, we set initially the bid specifications. We identified our needs and therefore the requirements, which are the criteria for both the operations and the testing of the different buses. Then we tender an award. award and for this, uh, we also start from a prototype requirement to verify the specification. We, we test the models. Many manufacturers borrow us some units to test. We have a, a trial field in one of our bus depots and we make the same testing for all the different units before purchasing them or launching the tender to purchase them. Then we go in person to the manufacturer facility. We go to see how the buses are being manufactured after the awarding process. Then we validate all the units and verificate uh, their specifications. And finally, we issue the acceptance uh, certificate. And therefore, the warranty starts uh, to run. This is the evolution of the fleet for us. Uh, we started with electric microbuses back in 2007. Uh, these ones have been completely renewed uh, by the ones you can see in the upper right uh, side of the slide, the Volta Rampini. Um, and then we have standard buses. One of the oldest were these Tempos Castrosua, which were initially compressed natural gas hybrids. We retrofitted them to turn them into fully electric and they charge by induction, but also conductive by night. They are currently running and it was a pilot innovative project. And then the conventional electric units are both from the brands Erether and BYD. Uh, some of them have been already retrofitted uh, to upgrade their performance. Something very important is to adapt the bus depot in order to have the charging infrastructure because you need to take into account the coexistence of different technologies at the same time. Also the training of EMT workforce in this electric proportion and to warranty the grid supply. Now, for instance, at EMT Madrid, we have uh, the three bus depots with different capacities for electric buses. And one of them is also involved in a very ambitious project of adding hydrogen buses as well. But this adaptation of bus depots may go beyond the installation of charging infrastructure. For instance, one of our oldest bus depots, in order to cope with this ambitious electrification uh, strategy, needs to be completely remodeled. Uh, so we are adapting it now, it's La Elipa, and it will, be, it will become the biggest roofed e-bus depot in Europe. It will use inverted pantographs uh, with a total capacity of almost 300 buses, around 318 buses. And in order to have a, enough dyn dynamic uh, charging process, we will use inverted pantographs. There are other solutions, but you need to look at your local context. And of course, this implies a very big uh, investment. The importance of knowledge exchange is also relevant, either by participating in different projects such as Solutions Plus, but also networking and cooperating with other networks and associations. It is very important because you always learn from the mistakes of others and you always learn from the success stories from others. So exchanging information is very relevant. It's always very good to know what others are doing, what has been working, what to improve. So I encourage you to really exchange information and learn from others. And getting to the conclusions and outcomes, from our own experience, the technological evolution causes obsolescence. The charge on the vehicle performance depends on weather conditions. Then the importance of a smart charging. It is not the same to charge five buses than 20 or 30 or 40. So smart charging softwares are also very important. There are very significant performance between different providers, uh, which might, might be increased by the temperature conditions, both in the vehicle and in the charger. Also the battery life decreases over time, so it's always good to think about what's gonna happen after 
the end of the life uh, of the battery. And there are great differences in autonomy compared to other technologies, for instance, compressed natural gases, uh, compressed natural gas buses. So, the conclusions and getting to an end. Electrification must be done in accordance with the characteristics of the bus network. You need to choose the optimal charging model considering your local context. For us, EMT is charging by night at the bus depot by using inverted pantographs and conductive charging. There are a few exceptions. Then you need to design and adapt the bus depots to guarantee the availability of energy, which must be efficient, reliable and redundant, meaning that you need more than one depot with chargers in case there is energy failure. Some key aspects to consider is the maintenance of the facilities and the workforce skills you need to upgrade your personnel in order to cope with this new uh, uh, mean of transport, this new technology. Charging of buses must be guaranteed efficiently and reliably. So you need high electrical power, of course, but this power may be reduced to the minimum by planning properly the charging processes. Therefore, electrification of the fleet is feasible and it's very linked with the smart charging software. Public-private cooperation is key and it's also very relevant to explore different financing and funding possibilities. And finally, the relevance of the political support, which may ease all the way. Thank you. Goodbye.